Welcome back to the program. South Sudan's government and the opposition forces in the Western Equatorian region are being reunited in the Joint Security Forces at the Maridi Training Center. This is part of the 2018 peace deal signed by Rick Mashar and President Salva Kiir. The South Sudanese troops have spent the past six years fighting each other, but now are reuniting as one. For the past six years, these men were enemies, fighting each other in the western equatorial region of South Sudan. But today, they are jogging, singing, and eating together at the Maridi Training Center. The soldiers are highly enthusiastic about the process of coming together and bonding by parading and celebrating their shared history and independence. Looking forward to putting the war behind them and moving forward towards a more peaceful and more prosperous future. We have been combined in one place. We are now soldiers. You see, at your left and right, it's a brother and sister. We have no problem, no tribalism. We are South Sudanese. The training is yet to be officially launched, but instructors are keeping the troops busy by giving them physical exercise and some orientation to get the past and work together as one force. We are putting them together. Even now, we mix them. We mix them. One from Iowa, one from South Sudan forces. And they sit together. They, 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 they talk together. They eat together. They sleep together. So we are building. We are building the co corporations among themselves. While the troops are motivated to reunify, the living conditions at the training center lack basic services. A peacekeeping patrol traveled to the center to assess the situation. The head of the UN Miss Field Office in Yambio said he would report back about the conditions in the hope of improving the situation. The conditions are not ideal. Uh, there's no shelter and uh, they're having to start building uh, small tukuls in which to live. There's a risk, a very, very high risk of uh, pneumonia developing during the, because of the cold that they're suffering in. There's not enough expectorants, there's not enough uh, uh, antibiotics uh, in the, in, that have been provided. Uh, the shelter is a very big, very, very serious concern. There are currently 1,423 soldiers, both from the South Sudan Defense Forces and the oppositions, living at the Maridi Training Center. Back here in Nigeria, health institutions in Oyo State are partnering with the government to prevent Lassa fever outbreak in the state as they begin awareness campaigns in all major markets within Ibadan, the state capital, beginning with Bodija, the largest commodity market in the state. Health officials explained the need to maintain a clean environment to ward off rats that may carry the Lassa fever virus. The awareness is also built to take place in other markets across the state. On the heels of the spread of Lassa fever, some states have made it a priority for other states not yet affected to increase awareness of residents and avoid an outbreak in their communities. To this end, the University College Hospital Ibadan, the School of Nursing, School of Hygiene and the Oyo State Ministry of Health are educating the public on the dangers of Lassa fever. The awareness kickstarts in Budija Market, the largest community market in the state. We have not reported any case of Ibadan in the state, but uh, we have reports that the neighboring states have reported the epidemic and should not wait when it gets here, that's why we are doing everything humanly possible to prevent this epidemic in the United States. And the only way to prevent this epidemic in the United States is to uh, uh, take out all the rats in our major market in particular, and as well as to inform people on how to uh, live a healthy life to prevent this epidemic by living in a, a healthy environment, taking care of the environment, personal sanitation, personal hygiene, so as to prevent the infection. Hey. 
spot beyond the Enlightenment, there is an appeal for the government to boost the number of health inspectors who are largely responsible for a successful advocacy. We are still appealing to the government to please, please put more effort to the staff of health worker in your state. Because if we, if we go down, we know the health, we have been looking around, the volume of the health worker in your state is very, very low. Assurances are given that something has been done about it. We think the governor he has started working on this and I believe very soon it will commence the recruitment. Other major markets in Ibadan, the state capital, and other areas across the state will also be visited by health authorities as the state government moves fast to ensure no case of Lassa virus springs up anywhere in the state. The United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization says swarms of desert locusts that have spread across East Africa could soon threaten widespread food production as they continue to move to more areas. The locusts, which was first sighted in Somalia in December, have since spread to Kenya and Ethiopia and are now within 200 kilometers of Uganda and South Sudan. The hungry swarms threaten to exacerbate food insecurity in a region where up to 25 million people are reeling from three consecutive years of droughts and floods. For now, uh, Kenya, Somalia and Ethiopia have been the main countries that have been infested by de desert locusts in billions. But then there are also other countries at risk, especially uh, South Sudan, Uganda, Eritrea, which is also infested so far. We are in a region where over 11 million people in the three countries are already uh, in uh, acute food insecurity. Uh, therefore, we need to make all possible effort to avoid uh, such a deterioration. We know that these locusts, the locusts that we see here, can create really massive uh, devastation, not only in terms of crop, but also in terms of pasture and therefore affecting the livelihoods of the pastoralist communities. Uh, for that to happen at this critical point, the only solution that works is aerial uh, spraying. Well, as a way of helping Somalia, the federal authorities and the United Nations, they're calling for urgent humanitarian assistance to avert an acute food insecurity situation that could threaten millions of people. The call was made during the launch of the post dia October to December Seasonal Food Security and Nutrition Assessment for Somalia. Approximately 4.1 4 million people across Somalia will continue to face acute food insecurity through mid-2020, uh, including 1.3 million people who need urgent humanitarian assistance. Over 962,000 children face acute malnutrition, including 162,000 who uh, could become severely malnourished uh, through the end of the year if their needs are not addressed. If the locust does hit uh, cropping areas or grazing areas at the worst time, the damages can be huge, up to 100% where the locust is. That doesn't mean the locust will necessarily affect all parts of the country, but uh, we need to be prepared. So uh, in, in close coordination with the Minister of Agriculture, uh, we have a plan of action. We are appealing jointly for funding. This is not just a problem. Well, that's it on the program today. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Layo Adegoke. Bye for now.